afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first panel of the SME Summit here in Oman. I want to thank, first of all, all of our panelists for attending. The first panel, which is SME Challenges. What are the challenges to SME growth or development here in Oman? My name is Bill Crew. I will be the moderator of the panel. I am the owner of Inspired Solutions, which is an Omani-based consultancy. We're generally contracted by Omani companies to design and manage SME development programs here in Oman. For instance, we designed and managed the cell program for OMIFCO, and just recently, the Hassan Growth Finance Project for BP Oman. In addition, we are contracted by Omani banks, banks throughout the region, to help increase access to finance for SMEs and access to credit and non-credit products. During the course of this panel, we will discuss several broad areas which may continue to challenge the SME development in Oman. And when I say continue, I refer to the tremendous positive gains which we have experienced here in Oman since early 2013 when we had the SME Symposium in Bahla. We hope to continue this positive and constructive spirit of Bahla here today. But while we're discussing about the challenges to SME development, it behooves all of us to also think about what are some of the solutions to these challenges. I'm going to structure the panel as such. We're going to take a few minutes to introduce ourselves and our direct experience here in Oman with regards to the SME ecosystem. We then have three broad categories of challenges to SME development or growth that we're going to discuss. And then the last 15 minutes or so, I'm hoping that we're going to have a lot of Q&A. And I want to make it a point that these broad categories are not exhaustive. These are just broad categories for discussion. Any other categories or challenges that you, the audience, want to bring up, let's do that. But let's wait till after our panelists discuss these, these challenges. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panelists. First of all, Dr. Halfen Al-Barami from the CBO. Then Mr. Paul Gregorovich, CEO, Oman Air. Ms. Maryam Al-Amri, a young CEO, entrepreneur of Youth Vision. And Mr. Adel Al-Hubaishi with Zubair SEC. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank now, you. if you could just take two minutes and introduce yourselves, and then we'll move quickly into the discussion. Please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Khalfan al barwani as was stated uh, shortly. Uh, I'm a vice president of Central Bank. I oversee three departments, uh, economic research and statistics, uh, financial stability, as well as international relations. Uh, last year, I was part of a study on uh, SME in Oman, and that is on the CBO website. Uh, now it's both in Arabic and English. And we basically look at the challenges and opportunities as far as the SME is concerned, and they try to find solutions. Uh, those the challenges and, uh, and opportunity are basically from both supply and demand side of the SME. But my focus today will be mostly on the financing side of the SME. Uh, in my position, I get to see uh, statistics on a monthly basis as far as financing is, is concerned from commercial bank to small and medium-sized enterprises, uh, as well as uh, hearing from the banks, uh, constant complaint, and how difficult it is to, uh, to meet the requirement of 5% that Central Bank has set for the, for the year 2015. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Grigorovic. Thank you, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen. Since August... 2014, I have the privilege to work daily in this beautiful country with 6,400 colleagues in Oman Air on its journey to become the best. We have very clear objectives. To run a safe airline, to remain the airline of first choice, where competition is even coming up in Oman. Objective number three, to make money to get the revenues up and the cost down. 
Number four, to cater for the growth of our airline. And last but not least, and that brings me here today, to contribute to the development and the well-being of the Sultanate of Oman. That means that today we have 62% of our workforce, which are Omani, but from the other side, to support, to stimulate, to work closely together with small and medium enterprises. And we are doing this by being a partner of the public authority for the development of small and medium enterprises, by having special privileges, but also in our tender processes that small and medium enterprises from Oman are getting priority above companies from abroad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maryam. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Maryam Al Amri. I am CEO and founder of Youth Vision. Uh, this uh, small uh, company uh, started or published in um, 2010, and we have complete five years of, uh, as a company. And uh, we do programs for the youth. Uh, it's in the social enterprise field. So we do like conferences, competitions, any programs, workshops, training, anything that's related to youth in whole Oman. Uh, we went to all Oman from Sanjan to Dufar. And I have more than 50 um, volunteers, part-time employees, full-time employees in, in my company. And more than 46,000 uh, followers in all social media in Oman. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Um, my name is Abdul Habeshi. I'm senior advisor with the Zubair Small Enterprises, or as everybody likes to call it, Zubair EC. Um, we are a social, or you know, we are one of the initiative of the Zubair Corporation toward uh, the CSRs uh, and uh, supporting the SMEs in Oman. Uh, trying to uh, create uh, a real ecosystem supporting this important sector. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. So without further ado, why don't we move into one of our first broad categories, and that is access to finance. And of course, we also have to ask ourselves, does this remain a challenge to development and a challenge to growth? Dr. Halpern, yes. you've been working on this with CBO. <laughs> I'll give it my best shot, yes. Uh, financing challenges for SME is not just an issue in Oman. It's an issue everywhere. And this is simply because SME are inherently very risky businesses. Uh, in the case of Oman, uh, commercial banks, this is from, uh, uh, from the supply side. Commercial banks have little incentive to lend to SME. For various reasons, for little, example. Little incentive. Little incentive, okay. yes, for various reasons. For example, uh, it's much easier uh, to lend uh, money to a consumer or a personal loan who is earning a salary or large corporation than an SME because of the risk associated with the, with the businesses. Uh, commercial banks, uh, from, again, from the supply side, have not really invested significantly in terms of building resources and capacity and skills uh, among their staff in order to assess and uh, uh, study small and medium-sized enterprises. From the demand side, uh, some of the issues have been raised this morning. Uh, we have uh, uh, people going to apply for SME loan. They don't have feasibility study. Uh, you have an incomplete feasibility study. Uh, some of them don't have any experience. They don't have history, and so on and so forth. So the challenge here are from both supply and demand side. Uh, of the financing. There are potential solutions. Uh, the Central Bank of Oman, for example, has mandated commercial banks to, uh, to have 5% of their portfolio, lending portfolio by year 2015 to SMEs. Uh, but banks have been coming to us and say it's very difficult for the reason I have just stated here. Uh, they have come with a solution, but which I think it's not very viable. Uh, one of the solutions is, uh, for example, to add uh, non-liability funding, such as letter of credit or letter of guarantees as part of the SME lending. Uh, we have been quite uh, resistant. So, so the banks want to count that towards the 5%. Exactly, exactly, it's part of 5%. But we have said these are just apple and oranges. Uh, the key is that we have asked them to develop their resources, skill and capacity, 
that they can assess uh, small and medium size. So, Dr. Hoffman, where are we today? The central bank has told yes. the banks yes. we have to be a 5% before the end of 2014. Yes, yes. And, and then, then it was extended. Yes. So today, where are we? It's about 2.5%. Halfway through, yes. <laughs> but which is still quite a challenge. Uh, so it seems like it's still a challenge. And, yes. and, and what's, what is the central bank? That's the directive of the central bank. Yes. Uh, some of the solution we have, uh, by the way, solution are not, as I say, you have to look at the whole infrastructure. For example, one of the solution would be uh, to expand what they call surrogate collateral. And the government, for example, can guarantee some of the credit. Okay. Uh, if you come up with a project that is viable as a startup business, and uh, that in itself can be a collateral, for example, but you require skills in commercial bank to assess the viability of the project. So the central bank is saying they will accept a sovereign guarantee as collateral as part of the reserve requirement, et cetera. We are not saying we are going to do that. This is a solution <laughs> that I propose. I would like <laughs> to say that. So, but I think it's a good idea. Some countries have done that. Uh, Malaysia has done it. Singapore we do, we do has done it. have a loan guarantee absolutely. system here, but it's not utilized. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the challenges. So that's then. one of the challenges. Perhaps that's one of the solutions, too, is perhaps exactly. we can use that loan guarantee perhaps for startup finance. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Other, other comments from, the, from, our, from our panel? Ms. Maybe uh, Mariam, have you any challenges with the uh, About funding the, my uh, company, um, I didn't, um, I thought for the first time that I will not t take loan from banks or something that related to, uh, to banks, loans and interest and so on. So uh, we start from zero and we uh, try to, you know, um, when I said we, we were uh, seven uh, founders uh, of this company, and uh, today I'm the only one who stay <laughs> in this company. So uh, this is one of my challenge. But when we started, we started as one team, so everyone can put anything from, from himself, money, effort, knowledge, what, anything that we can handle. Uh, this company, so we cannot take money from, uh, thank you very much, from banks, so. So you financed it yourself? Yes, but it took three years okay. uh, to, you know. Do you feel you're in a position to, to attract financing now? I'm not sure because okay. now I'm, I'm trying to, you know, uh, make my company, I mean, grow my company, so maybe I'll need some cash or finance just to, you know, um, I don't want to, to still in the same position, the same things that I'm doing in the whole five years, past five, five years. So I'm, I'm, I just, I want to increase my, you know, my, make my company, it's, yeah, grow. But your, your ability to, to attract financing is probably based upon the contracts you're going to have with larger corporations, because you don't have the history. Yes. And that's one of the thoughts that we were thinking about. What about a, a credit bureau for SMEs? Is that a possible solution to help increase access to finance? Yes, if I can just uh, quickly address. Two quick points, basically. If you look at the statistics, the survey we did, uh, about 80% of uh, Omani uh, get the SME loans from uh, commercial banks. Uh, the remaining, uh, they have their 80%. own. 18. 18. One eight. eight. Uh, the remaining basically is from family and personal fund and so on and so forth. Just, uh, that just a, a caveat, uh, one of the issues. In terms of credit bureau, we have in Central Bank a credit bureau, but it targeted businesses and individuals, but we are expanding it to have a dedicated section for SME, as well as Islamic banking. So this is one of the areas, and I think that will add value in terms of lending. Okay, so step by step, yes. perhaps we're getting there. We're working on it, yes. Thank and you. one of the things that recently came up is is most employees that want to get a, an employee loan to buy a house, the banks are going to look at the employer to make that credit decision. Is that correct? Yes. So, so one of Marion's, even though Marion might be so very, very successful, her employee might not be able to get a loan for the house. And so what incentive then, where's the incentive for the employee to work with Marion or Oman Air? Where's the incentive? That's my question again. <laughs> that, that, You're the CEO. <laughs> that, that, the, chicken and egg, uh, the chicken and egg story. But again, history is very critical. You know, if you go to a bank and uh, you want to borrow money, either you work for an institution or you are a business, 
the first thing they look is history. Uh, and most businesses here don't have history. And that is very difficult. But you're looking at the history of the employer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Versus the employees. Exactly. The but, but then, if you have a company, for example, that has been in business for a while, they have been very successful, they have grown. If an employee goes to apply for a loan, it's much easier for them to enter that employee. For example, if you have a company that has been there for one year, uh, that does not have financial staff, it's a different story. I mean, that, uh, that's why. Mr. Odell, what, what do you see? Do you see this still as a challenge with those entrepreneurs that it you It is are still a huge challenge, actually. Uh, if we go for uh, the biggest challenges okay, around the world facing the SME sectors, and according to the International uh, Accountant Federation, 25% of that is regulation and rules. 22% is economic barriers, you know, and then we come to the fund, which is almost 12%. Uh, the, the, the funding here, Ramon, if you go, I agree with Dr. Khalfan that most of the SMEs, they don't know even how to explain themselves, explain their ideas, okay, rather than writing a business plan. That's the truth. But still, there is plenty of them. During the last two or three years, uh, we've been working with the SMEs, uh, a, a huge uh, mindset have been changed, okay? And there is plenty of them coming toward us now asking us, okay, help me in developing my business, help me to, uh, uh, to, draft, to draft a real business plan where I can move forward, okay? Uh, still, the collaterals, okay, it's a huge barrier to funding through the uh, commercial banks, okay, and we have another also uh, from the government, uh, you know, like funding like a raft, he has to be, you know, uh, uh, non-employment and uh, he has to work on head of his uh, business. And that's good and it's not at the same time, okay. It, it's really, like Mariam here, what she's saying, it's the time to move, to, you know, forward but she still need fund, so she can do that. She can take the next step. We have a lack of trust toward this important sector, okay? And I guess we are concentrating on one point only, creating opportunities of employment, okay? Which is one of the conclusions. If we have a right, successful, strong SME sector, Okay, it will contribute that opportunities. But if we concentrate on only creating opportunities of employment, okay, we will, you know, we will have a huge gap, which uh, Dr. Rafael talking about. It will remain there. It will not never disappear because we will concentrate on some, uh, you know, uh, companies which will have or need or demand a huge number of employment. I don't, I don't know if I would say it's, it's a matter of trust. I think what I'm hearing is it's an inability to evaluate the risk. That's kind of what I'm hearing on the part of commercial lending. Actually, you know, the SME sector is all about risk. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, if, if you are not willing to take that risk to support those people, I mean, banks all have risk management teams and they can evaluate everything. So but they don't the 5%, want. Yeah, are we? The 5% is there. But nobody can take it, okay? Uh, 2.5 only have been uh, used out of 5%, okay? Which is a, a good uh, percentage, okay? It's, which is almost 50% of the total thing. But still, you know, we have a lot of the, we need to show the SMEs how they can get that fund. Absolutely. Paul, do you have any observations on the, on the financing challenge? Yes, I think when someone has a dream to set up his own business, they are starting with a lot of enthusiasm, like you did. But then the day comes that you have to present part of a type of business plan okay. to convince the bank. Are you trained to write a business plan? Quite often not. Are you knowing, and in this part of the world you don't have the fiscal burden, how are you going to deal with VATs and all type of other things or subsidies? In the part of the world I'm coming from, you cannot register yourself or a small medium enterprise without a basic trading in all those financial parts. Because when you're brown or blue eyes, the bank cannot give you money. And I, at the Oman Air, cannot give business simply on brown or blue eyes. When someone steps in, I have this for you, 
this is a good price, I'm going to deliver it in two weeks. How are we sure that at the end of the day, our guests on board, our customers, are going to stick into or to get the promise we have given to them, and is then a small and medium enterprise delivering? Are they cash short? Maybe the bank is willing to give the money, but they are not willing to release the cash at a specific moment. And you need a proper training than just, and if you dream, you have normally your eyes closed, to walk with closed eyes into the future and you're not capable to do it. And then you get a big disappointment. Some of your colleagues left, you are staying behind alone, but you're fighting through. And then you need to have the fighting spirit really to become successful. Absolutely, because you're making commercial decisions yeah. and you, you have to have that reliance yes. that these the SMEs have the ability to perform and to supply. So, so to wrap this up, we do have many sources of financing today. We have the commercial banks, we know we have challenges there. We have Rafa, it's been very successful. We have other organizations, Shiraka, Grofin, Raphael's organization, but we still have some work to do. But we have, I, I can tell you I've been here for five years and I've seen tremendous progress in this area. But relating to what Paul, you were talking about was technical capacities is what I call them. Yeah. The technical capacities of SMEs. And Paul, what you were talking about and what Adele, you were talking about is the ability to write a coherent business plan or feasibility study, right? So, so we do, and I personally, I accelerate SMEs for four years and I try, every year I say, this is the year I'm gonna do balance sheets. And I, I haven't done that yet. I get profit and loss statements, I get cash flow projections, and I know they're doing it to get the grant. And I say, inshallah, God willing, you will continue to do that. But I don't think they are. As Paul, as you said, we don't have a fiscal regime. We don't have taxes here. There's no impetus or encouragement to prepare financial statements. Mm -hmm. And I personally believe that's one of the remaining challenges here in Oman. And, and one of you um, was talking about the sales management yeah. um, as, as a challenge. Yes. And, and what do you see with regards to your SMEs? Uh, the, the problem is, you know, like if I know what I'm, you know, gonna provide to my clients, it's, it's okay. I, I'm selling a certain product, but what is the value? There is plenty of people else selling the same product, selling the same services. What value you are giving your client? How are you gonna convince those clients that you you are gonna provide them with this value? Okay, some they will come up with a nice, unique selling proposition. Uh, uh, points, okay, which is good, but still we are looking for values, okay. Uh, nowadays people look, even the consumers themselves, looking for those values. Maybe they don't understand what is it, or what is the difference between a feature and, you know, unique selling proposition, or even a value proposition, you know, like, it, it, but still they are looking for these things in their products and they, they, they have to know it, they have to understand. A lot of the SMEs, if you ask them, uh, what is your vision? Why you, are, why you have brought up this uh, idea? Why you starting a company? They don't know, okay? Just you want to create money. How are you gonna create money, okay? How are you gonna convince people to pay you if you don't know what you, what you're so going to provide? It's a lack them? of articulation. And Miriam, you've gone through this before. You had Yeah, I just want to say vision. that there is inner challenges. There's what? Inner challenges. Inner challenges. And external challenges. Those that we, we, what we talk about, it's external challenges. If we don't have, like Mr. Ado said, if we don't have believing, a passion, uh, a good idea that I'll fight for it uh, inside me, uh, I will never learn what I have to learn. I will never get money. <laughs> from any, any, any way, the resources, anything. So I think the entrepreneurs, it means good idea and love this idea before having uh, a job or creating a business or a company or, uh, you know, fighting for having money or so, so on. Because at the end of the day, I wake, I wake up every day and I sleep and the idea is still in my head all the time because I want to, to make this idea real and um, learn everything um, from anyone. Because when we started in 2010, there are nothing about SMEs, there is no culture about SMEs, and no one teach me or 
teach the team how to write visibility studies or market research or, um, you know, we, start, we started from scratch, but because we love this idea. We love, we love to, uh, to, you know, to have this company here in Oman and spread this uh, programs and so on, the projects, the services, whatever it is, here in Oman because we love this idea. So this is the inner challenges. I face challenges with my family, with my colleagues uh, who graduate from the same uh, university and... Um, how, how do you articulate that vision? With the culture also. How, how did you learn to articulate that vision for you know, suppliers or, or stakeholders or when you, when you wanted to get an office out there? At the first challenge that I faced that the social enterprise field, they don't know what's the meaning of the social enterprise field here in Oman. So this is the first challenge that I face when I want to convince them that we are doing pro programs for the youth um, for free, but we take the money from ministries or from CSR departments and all uh, companies. So, so you have the ability to, to promote or broadcast your vision. And since 2010, I, I think, have you seen it, has it been getting better in terms of helping other entrepreneurs? Is, there a, is the ecosystem supportive yeah. more supportive, very supportive, of really helping entrepreneurs like you articulate that vision? Yeah, the first three years, we try all to conference and knocking all the doors, and no one answer us, and no one support us, and so on. Um, but uh, later on, uh, suddenly, all the doors are open. I don't know why. <laughs> you articulated it well. <laughs> and some, you wrote it down. Some of them, they send us letters and come to, you know, uh, we have an office here, and we can support you on here. Or you went so through on. the Omifco SME Accelerator Omifco, yes. to they help gave you us focus. grant, 10,000 riyadh of money. Thank you for them. And also NBC, they... Uh, so you took advantage of the infrastructure, and the infrastructure is getting better. Yes. Uh, uh, barrier, but uh, we have to improve ourselves see, just the, the to fight. The other barrier yeah. uh, which Mariam brought up now is the business model of each entity. They don't have or they don't know how to create that business model. Okay, so when you go for their revenue stream, okay, and you see it now in Mariam here, you are depending on sponsoring. Correct, Mariam? Yeah. Okay, is that sustainable? Not. It's not. Okay, because sponsoring, it's mean as much as they are making a profit, they will give you to, or they will contribute to your company. But if there is no profit nowadays, we have a problem with the oil and gas, oil uh, prices. That's mean their uh, sponsorship will drop down. It's not sponsoring. It's not sponsoring. So no. we take projects for one year, three years, four years to train um, youth and many skills and. Uh, but how they contribute? The, the the large company. How they are contributing? Why they are paying you? This is the question. Uh, because we have like. Um, a very huge. Uh, what is it? In, what is it? Impact on youth here in Oman. What is it? We make for a, them? a brand in it for, for our. Them? What is in it for the large con con uh, co corporation? Why they pay you? This is the question you should ask yourself. Why they had to pay me for those programs? <clears throat> Two, three years, one month, one day, it's no matter. So yeah. Adele, your, your, your point is, is it has to be very commercial focused. It's mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and, and perhaps when we have those incubators and accelerators and sponsorships, it's not entirely commercial. And so maybe that's one of the challenges to development is how do we move SMEs from a sponsorship model to a strictly commercial model. Exactly. Maybe that's another step in policy. I just want to uh, talk with Paul a moment about how this impacts Oman Air, especially with procurement. Yes, of course, in our procurement uh, process, we have the doors open for small, medium enterprises. They can register, and if we know them, we will give them the business, even if the supply is more expensive than, for instance, an international firm. Wow. We have a bandwidth because this is contributing to the sultanate by creating the jobs. The contingency for us is very important because if someone starts with a new concept or a new idea, is that small and medium enterprise more or less supported by more staff members? You are alone. If you're getting sick tomorrow, who can step into the delivery of the goods? And quite often to attract very good young people, they want to have a good salary. 
And in addition, they want to have job security, but a small and medium enterprise cannot offer job security. In Oman Air, I can. So how do you attract the right intellectual capital next to your financial capital? That's a challenge. On top of that, what are your liabilities? Many people walk in with closed eyes again because they have to dream. If you have a good idea and I copy it tomorrow and I start competing with you, what are the rights you are having to stop me? And if something is going wrong, for instance, with an American passenger, how are you insured with your liabilities? So there are a number of things where we as Omen Air have to look at the moment that we are engaging a small and medium enterprise, how robust is next to the financing part, the intellectual capital, and in case that something goes wrong, that there is a liability and a consistency of services. Not easy. No, not at all. Not I just had a quick comment on something you said earlier uh, regarding the Raft Fund. Uh, I think it's a little bit too early to say if they have been successful. They have been successful in lending the money. Uh, you will have to wait hey, well, a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, that's fine. But you would have to look at the balance sheet down the line. To One other thoughts to keep in mind towards the end of our, our, our discussion is, who's going to be responsible for the development of the SMEs? Does Oman Air have a responsibility? Yes, we have absolutely responsibility. And that's the reason why it is included in our five objectives, in objective number five. Okay. It is our duty to support either with rebated tickets, by special cargo weights, by development possibility, or where we are a member of the, uh, the uh, public authority for the development to contribute with training. And that is one of the thoughts we are having as well. How is it possible maybe under the umbrella of the Oman Air Academy to also provide training for small and medium enterprises that you know what a cash flow statement is and at the end of the day, how you could apply for a labor clearance. We are doing this every day. Awesome. And speaking of labor clearances, um, our last issue that we're going to talk about is a possible challenge or regulatory issues. Um, we still see challenges with labor regulations. We still see increasing challenges with labor regulations. That's my personal opinion. In the past couple of years, we have pushed homogenization. We have increase minimum salaries. How do SMEs attract talent when there's possibly more money available yeah. to go work in the government? It's really complicated. <laughs> Very complicated, that's, <laughs> yes, our, that's our answer at the moment. A actual uh, uh, couple of weeks or less, we had uh, uh, a program called Tajribati, it's been my experience, okay. Uh, so it was about labor and labor law. We, we have uh, one of from the Minister of uh, Manpower uh, as uh, one of the speakers in that, uh, uh, we call it Tajribati. Uh, so uh, what we discover is that uh, a lot of the SMEs, they don't understand. They don't what? They don't understand exactly the, the law or even they don't know Either the uh, you know businesses, uh, uh, you know like what they call it, uh, their professions are humanized or not, okay? Because some of our professions are humanized already, so you cannot ask for foreigners for that uh, profession, okay? As well, they don't understand the percentage of humanization in their entities, how it will look. Uh, on the other side, Minister of Manpower, they admitted that there is a communication problem between some of their, you know, who should provide the services for the SMEs and the SMEs themselves. Some of their employees, they don't understand the, the law itself, okay? So it's from both sides, okay? And uh, I guess we, they can, you know, like we can, we can uh, solve a lot of that, uh, regulatory problems between manpowers and the SMEs if we uh, build a great relation through communication uh, with them and tell them exactly where and how they can uh, we're, we're trying issue to do that, this. aren't we? we? We're trying to do that, but still, that's, how, that's a platform was trying you know, to, to bring them together so each, w each will understand the other side pain. Okay, and it was a really successful, uh, you know, uh, event. 
and, but we wish it will, we will have more of this. So the dialogue's uh, going on. Okay. 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 Mariam, do you have any challenges with, uh, you, did, you had to reincorporate your company. Did you have find a lot of support to do that? <laughs> it took a lot of months, I mean, Step like many step. months, yeah, to just, you know, finish the, all the papers and uh, uh, everything in, in the commerce and everywhere. So, um, what would have helped? Is there anything that you can think of that would have really helped you uh, do the process more effectively or quicker? Less bureaucracy. Less bureaucracy, meaning yes. perhaps someone who knew could tell you exactly what to do, A, B, C. And everything in one day, not okay. in months. Okay. I mean, <laughs> right. so clear yeah, clear. online it will be better than going here and there. And, um, so more sensitivity to SMEs, perhaps, that one-stop shop. And one of the things that I know a lot of the business forums have been talking about is, is really helping to get people in the ministries, being an, an SME ombudsman, for instance, mm -hmm. especially when you need permits. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's a to-go person for strictly for micro or small businesses. Mm -hmm. would, would that have helped, having that one person? Sorry? Would, having one person to go to as an SME what do you mean? Um, the focal point. The focal point? Mm -hmm. To help you in the, in the bureaucracy. Yeah. That you have one door to be one. open instead of 12. Yeah, sure. Um, I think Senate office, I think it's called Senate office or something. Because we have one-stop shop. Yeah, one-stop shop, it's, yes. It's um, <laughs> <laughs> they try to help us in all these, but I think it's, um, I mean, making okay. more, um, you know, delaying and... Uh, for us, so sometimes I said, if I did it by myself, I'll, I'll finish it in one, one week or something like that. And this can but, be a development yeah. problem or challenge because some people get discouraged. A lot. A lot, a of, lot. A lot of the SMEs actually, you know, they get you know, like fed up. They, they don't want to continue. They have brilliant ideas. As she mentioned, there is some barriers, okay? Some of it because of the bureaucracy, some of it because of rules and regulations, you know. We need to be more flexible in some areas with the SME uh, sector, especially with the, with the unique ideas they come up with. And some of those ideas could really contribute to, toward the, the, the society, okay, if they get the right support and if they get the right leads. But still, you know, a lot of them, they give up. It's easiest to be an engineer, a PDO, Absolutely. or, you know, or a monitor, or wherever, you know, it's uh, exactly. Dr. Halpin? Uh, just very quickly on the organization. The problem is we have seen a lot of policies that are being issued by the government, the Ministry of Manpower. I'm sorry to say they're not based on any effective study. Uh, for example, 20% of the organization, 15, 30%. Uh, as you can see, most of the SMEs in Oman are uh, basically uh, based on uh, either unskilled or semi-skilled labor. And a lot of our graduates at the universities and so on, and uh, if they're going to start a business, fine. But uh, as long as it goes to working for the SME, it's very difficult. So how do you harmonize, if you don't have the exact figures, how many Omanis are willing to work in, uh, in SME? And this is, uh, this is a big challenge. And, and there is a huge culture barrier here as well. Uh, yes, okay. I agree. With where, where people, they, they refuse to work even, okay, even if you give them huge salaries, okay, uh, and you pay them like minimum, they are fresh graduated, and that's happened to me, you know, and I saw that in front of me. He, they get paid 700 real per month, and they just, you know, less than a year graduated, so that's a huge amount for them, it's a great amount. Less, in less than three months, five out of eight have been quit their jobs, okay? Two remain for one year and they refuse to register at the manpower or even the, uh, uh, you know, uh, social insurance uh, um, authority because they are wa waiting for, uh, for uh, you know, the government uh, job. I believe I may add to that, I'm sorry. I mean, the issue of, <laughs> culture, the issue of culture is one. Uh, there is an issue of incentive as well. For example, if you, pay me 700 Omani reals, and uh, you know, uh, I don't have a place to stay. My dad doesn't give me a bedroom. I don't have a car. I'm going to work for 700 Omani reals. 
But you know, if you know, you know, I can go home and I have a bedroom. And I, so, so, so incentive as well is there. So there is it incentive for many people. So it, it's that's it's why. incentive. One of the things could yeah. encourage you know uh, yes. people to work at the SME sector or the small and medium enterprises. But there is a lot, a lot of other things. Where are you working? Oh, so I work for. Uh, we need to do better <laughs> to incentivize SMEs and not and to recognize these roadblocks and try to break them down a little bit. So I just want to wrap up. I have two questions just to, you know, think about it here in, the, in this room, in this hall. How many of you here have a business or start a business, have a, his own? How many people own? here are, yeah. have your own business, have started a business? Raise your hands. So we have a very, very nice. Okay. And from the support of companies and government, how many of you thinking to have him or her own business? <laughs> Just to Maybe know. One. <laughs> one, two, three, four, How many people are thinking about it? Okay. How many of the, of those who are, I mean, I, uh, how many of them were uh, ready to invest themselves, the, them savings, the savings, if you or you or you, for an SME, for a project, for a business? How many people are willing to commit their life savings to this? It's a matter of trust and moving from talking to acting. And <laughs> you're looking for an investor? <laughs> no, I don't look it for. It's, I mean, moving from theoretical talking to practical things because SMEs knows the challenges, and they knows, and maybe they cannot speak. They cannot talk about See, it. I mean, uh, clearly, uh, most of the time in conferences like these conferences, we bring a lot of uh, people from government sector, from private sector, and sometimes for, as SME. I'm, I'm here as an SME, so I'm talking about a lot of people here. So maybe they will uh, uh, tell me after this session why you didn't talk about that and, and those. So I'm so sorry if I didn't, I mean, raise here your challenges or your difficulties, because sometimes we don't know how to raise it or we don't know how to speak of it, you know. But the one who, I mean, in, the, in this business, in this field, he will know. I mean, like we're talking about regulations, we talk about funding, we talk about um, dreaming, we talk about, you know, uh, how to write disability, how to have these skills. But we never, I mean, try to, to one day or one year to, to be in this sector. Just to know the difficulties exactly and how can we solve it. Absolutely. So, yeah. For myself, I've been in that too for a long time. <laughs> and and with, with that in mind, I'd like to take maybe five minutes, ten minutes to have any questions in the audience. And we have microphones. Um, excuse me. We have one microphone back here. So this gentleman. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, conference. Really like it. Uh, just actually, uh, it's not a kind of question. Just uh, I will uh, throw something in my mind. Uh, okay, I am one of. Well, like uh, people who wants to be, uh, uh, who wants to try his own business, but at the same time, uh, going back to the reality, I wanted uh, a fun, a fun to make my life safe as well. Uh, so if if we take the two uh, things, I will not find myself, or I will not find uh, a safe place as working as an SME or as an entrepreneur. Why? Because maybe I cannot have the support enough or uh, I cannot feel safe of my money or putting my all money or putting all my life on hands of that, or of the, my own company or my idea. Maybe my idea is great, but I feel like myself, I'm not uh, great enough to run a whole business. And uh, when I try to find out a person who helped me out on that, I will find a lot of difficulties to reach this person. At the end of the day, I find, my, my, uh, I find myself to get back to reality, not to dream a lot about my own business. So I feel like better to start working with one of the companies or with the government, better than uh, going 
to the difficult way, which is the SME and starting my own business. Because sometimes you feel it, uh, you find it like really, when, whenever you are thinking about it, uh, you think, for example, I wanted to start this, but you find difficulty or you f when you get back to reality, you'll find you, you will not be able to, uh, what's called, uh, make your life easy or make, make you at least safe on the next level. Right, so, but, you know, Mariam took the risk. You have to take that risk, no? It's inner challenges. Yeah, you have, inner you have, challenges <laughs> yeah, you have to take the risk, but the risk is really big here in Oman. Yes, it is. It's yeah. big everywhere. Compared with different uh, countries. About that, uh, moving from comfort zone to the risk, you know, taking risk and starting your own business, it's very challenging. I mean, till now, I'm just thinking about, you know, why I'm doing this, um, why I didn't get a job and that's it. By the way, when I, when I want to, in, to company to have, yani, to give them proposal or something, they offer me a job, which means that I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Absolutely. So I can, I can get profit more, yani, I mean, double that, you know? So this is an inner challenge. I know it's difficult for men here in Oman because they have a lot of things that they have to, uh, to secure. Uh, for for women, maybe it's less risk, um, but uh, yeah, it's an inner challenges. If you if you if your idea, if you're believing in your idea, and it will be, um, you know, a very good business, um, you have to take this risk. All right. And you have to decide about. Okay, it. so it's hard. Um, Kasim, you had a question. Here in front. And then uh, over here. We have Oh, we'll do Qasim first and then this gentleman. Shukran. Uh, Qasim Al Blushi from Omifco, Oman India Fertilizer Company. Actually, it's very interesting in our discussion, and uh, just I want to highlight one thing here. Uh, we cannot say we are supporting SME. At the same time, we are not taking risk. People here want to play it safe. This is what I feel. We cannot do both. Either we take the chilling and we say we'll support, because we cannot guarantee that our money will come back with a huge profit, and then we say we're supporting SME. No way. We have to be balanced. At the same time, even those companies who are big companies, actually, they having that big fear on dealing with the small businesses, with small you know, inter, uh, entrepreneurs. With that, those will never succeed. We have to come down a little bit. At the same time, it's our responsibility as a big companies to groom them up, to bring them up to our level. We are we're not waiting them only to, you know, to be at the level we are expecting because they are just starting up. So I think a lot of you know, efforts, a lot of... Uh, uh, we, as a big companies, we need also to prove. It's not only by, by saying that we are supporting. No, tell me, show me what you have done for those SME in Oman. And how many, for instance, you help them to grow up and move further. Absolutely. This is to the big companies. We want also them to highlight on this and see what exactly they can do, actually. Because with, without that, I don't think so. We will be able to grow those uh, young uh, entrepreneurs. If I may Thank comment. you. If I may comment on that, from the other side, we cannot take the risk away by simply, as a larger company, rely that things will work properly. But I give you one example. The frequent flyer cards from Oman Air are printed and posted in the United Arab Emirates. And the supplier said, we can only do it there. We canceled the contract because no one is going to explain to us why this cannot be done in Oman. Exactly. So we said, you are going to set up a branch office, small medium enterprise. It can be produced over here. I maybe partly run a risk because it are my most loyal customers who are getting their Simbad card and suddenly they don't get it anymore, but there's no, not a chip on it, but we do it. But if someone is coming and would say, I can produce the toothbrushes in an amenity kit on board 
for half the price, give the business to me, and a need to have on a yearly basis around two million toothbrushes in a humidity kit, and I see a company with two persons, two from abroad, and they're suddenly going through it. I cannot afford, by also representing the brand of the Sultanate of Oman, that I step in those type of things. So it is always, it's feeling, if our purchasing department is meeting someone, can we help? We even support financially, if it needs to be, by waving the credit lines and to let them flourish. But it is not as easy as you try to pretend it that we should give blind chances to every small, medium enterprise. My responsibility also forces me to, to be careful and to see if it is sustainable on the longer term. For instance, if we are paying them on time, yeah. sometimes we are keeping them for more than three months or six months to pay their, their, their money. We are, I mean, at that post, I think that you will be able also to just find out a solution to pay them as, as early as possible. That will help them because many people are suffering out of that. Yeah. Uh, of course, I understand that different businesses are having different sensitivity, yeah. but at the same time, everyone has to play their role. In a way that, of course, making them safe, but at the same time, giving those people, you know, the opportunity to grow up. Thank you. I fully agree. You had a question? Oh, a question in the front? Can we have a mic in the front, please? I got the mic if I can't talk. <laughs> okay. So, one second to last question. Last question, please. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you for this. Uh, actually, two years back, I was working for a good corporation in this country with a good paying salary. I took off on a dream that I become an entrepreneur. Well, this entrepreneur dream did not continue for long. Right now, I am in a position where I am looking for a job and I'm closing down the business. The reason is not because of incapability of myself, the reason of the regulations in this country, which choking us a little bit. I'm, I'm talking about regulations at the beginning when I went to the Ministry of Manpower. They had certain ways. First, I started with, consulta with the consulting, human resources consulting. I'm still doing that because that's my passion, that's my expertise, over 25 years of HR experience. And then I thought this consulting probably is not going to work in this country because that consulting, it goes into different uh, areas. I don't want to go into that. Then I started the dream of establishing my own service company, service like maintenance, which is not my passion, but it's something like a source of income. The challenges like within us, as you said, uh, Mariam, you have an inner, inner challenge that never continue, it never uh, sustain. Because the inner challenge, it has to stop sometimes. Because you have other commitments. Every one of us here in this country has a family, has somehow financial commitments in a bank or to pay off a loan, housing loan, a personal loan, whatever. By doing an SME as small business, it's, got, it's not gonna pay your bill at the end of the month. So where, where is the regulations? They are supposed to support us. If they tell us to go and hire an Omani guy, I respect the Omanis, I love them, they are my brothers, but I have to pay 350 riyals for a second school lever. It's not gonna produce anything for me. I have to pay 700 riyals for a graduate. It's not gonna produce anything for me. While I can get an experienced guy for more than that. That's what we want from the Ministry of Manpower to help us a bit ease on their regulations. We are not a big corporation. We are a small corner office sitting there doing business. Absolutely. And yeah. so where we are now, we are talking here all in business. It, it, remains, it remains a challenge to the growth of the SME sector. Absolutely. I think that's one of the, I think we can take away one of the number one. in this country, the
the rule, the process. They keep slowly, slowly, slowly. I will just give you a small comparison and then tell me what is the reality problem, how we will solve it. Dubai in 1971 was depending on oil 90%. On 2000, they start uh, care for SMEs on 2009. Now, th they depend on oil just 30% because they develop the SMEs. They take the risk. They trust on the SMEs. They put rules which encourage them to develop the country. But if our process is still like old way, keep going, we will never go ahead. So we should really come back to reality and leave the speech now. Thank you. <laughs> Last question. Thank you for your patience. Um, just a couple of points I would like to make. First of all, something of a technical point with the central bank's 5%. Yes. I think one of the approaches that we've had with SMEs is a lot of these quotas problem with quotas is you can never meet them, you know, unlike harmonization where it's imposed. 2.5% to me makes a lot of sense. If there aren't enough eligible borrowers to meet the 5%, so be it. However, we keep hearing from bankers that not all businesses need to borrow to start up their business. They need working capital at some point. They need facilities, letters of credit, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know if it's an oversight from the bank not to look at these as towards that 5%. These are facilities, short term as they may be. They're very useful. So why not consider that, right? Businesses need to be educated on whether you need to get a loan or whether you need to get these type of facilities. And I'm sure many of them don't. The, uh, the other point I'd like to make to Paul is when you look at robustness of SMEs, as you've said, and, and you look at uh, working with them, I believe, as it's been mentioned before, there's a strong need for capacity building which is what you're, you're doing, but it needs to be set out right from the beginning. I'm gonna give you some trust, but I need this from you. I'm gonna provide you with this. Many businesses, Oman still do not provide that. Maybe Oman Air can afford to do that, or Omefco can provide that, but a lot of companies don't. So that's just a point to highlight. That if we're gonna want robust SMEs, we need to have capacity building built in, into our ICV systems, if you like. The last point which I've heard about labor regulations and whatnot, and something that you have said, uh, is sometimes we have to play by the rules to be able to win in the game. Well, understandably, labor regulations in Oman are choking some businesses, but we've noticed that the intake of labor in a lot of industries, especially SMEs, has been foreign labor and not Omani labor. While we're talking about creating jobs, and you, as you've mentioned, the creating the right type of jobs and the incentives and whatnot, it seems to me that our SME path right now, as it is, with the demands that SMEs are asking for, is going to hurt Omani employment. This is not to say we should omanize jobs and create only jobs for Omanis. That's not what I believe. I think a job is a job, Omani, non-Omani, wherever you come from. If you're talented enough, if you're good enough, I would like to hire you. Mariam, I would like to hire you if you're good enough. Right, Paul, I'd like to hire you if you're good enough. But if you're not, I don't care where you come from. It doesn't really matter. So we should stop complaining about the regulations without creating businesses that don't need foreign labor in the first place, low-skilled foreign labor. By all means, Oman needs foreign labor and needs people to build and maintain and clean or whatever it is. It doesn't matter where they come from. They have to be good enough. Many SMEs in Oman, as your study shows, Dr. Khalfan, do not create those opportunities. The example of Dubai, Dubai is not only small companies. Dubai is mega companies and small companies. But what Dubai has done and many other countries have done is attract talent wherever it comes from and they pay for talent, right? They don't sit and complain, I, I can't hire cheap labor from country X or Y or Z or I'm allowed to or not allowed to, right? This is the conflict that we're having. I wanna create a company, uh, the gentleman had mentioned a service company. It might be a good business model for him Right? But for what we need for SMEs, we need more talent. We need companies that create value. We need companies that are able to export services and goods. And that's not what we're seeing. We need to revise you know, the supply side of SMEs. Right? And, and I understand that these regulations are not going to change overnight. And we're not going to relax them because we have a serious issue with the balance of the workforce. If we continue on the path of relaxing further and further, what's going to happen at the end of the day is we're going to have predominantly low-skilled, 
uh, cheap labor, right, which is required, and very little talent being developed. And we go back to the original problem. No incentives for Amanis to work in the SME sector because it is predominant or dominated by these type of labor. So we need to balance our arguments and to have a, a serious approach and to ask ourselves, what kind of SMEs are we creating in Oman? Are they creating values for the individuals that own sense. them, but also for the social or their social impact? I think that's right. an excellent point. Right, thanks so much for all that. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Actual, uh, what you say is really great, and that's what we should do. We shouldn't, you know, keep warning of what is happening, uh, uh, you know, rules and regulation. As I mentioned earlier, International uh, Accountant Federation have did a study on 2011, 12, 13, 14th, and now they are doing the 15th. Okay, and it's all show the same problem in uh, Latin America, the North America, Europe, Middle East. Uh, Africa, and in, in the whole world. The biggest and huge barrier is rules and regulation, which is 25%. So it's not only in Oman, it's all over the world. The same problem. The biggest problem is rules and regulation. We have to find the solution. As any things, we have to create, we have to be creative so we can work. Most of the people who's you know, uh, uh, warning about the, the, the manpower, they are either working in uh, retails or they are in uh, construction field. How many construction companies do we need more in Oman? In Muscat itself, do we need more construction company? I don't think so. We need to see what is missing in the construction field and create companies to fill up that gaps not bringing more manpower in to do some construction in this company or that company or for the government itself. We need to find the gap in the market. We, do, we don't need any more uh, Bakhur Abayas outlets, okay? Out of 100 ladies I met during the last three, three years, okay, there is like 60% of them that are working in Bakhur and Abayas. Okay, let's be like Kidani. You hear about Kidani? Okay, Kidani, she came up with something. She have a talent. She's a, she drawing nice things. Okay, and she love, you know, she love her culture. So she started creating something, okay, different and unique. That's why she is like this out in the market. Excellent. So, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> We don't have time for more questions right now, but we do have a feedback form. And if you do have a question, please write it down. And, and um, one of the organizers, I'm not sure what we're going to do with it, but um, they'll be submitted to, to one of us on the panel. And certainly we're available. Um, some of us are available at lunch, too, for further questions. Thank you so much, and thank you to all the panelists. It's been wonderful.